Hey y'all, it's Nick from Undefeated Productions, and welcome back to the 3-2 Pitch, our podcast where me and Jer are going out and talking about things around the world of baseball, and in this one, and we are back with our championship series prediction, or recap, and our World Series predictions. So, Drew, how you doing today? I'm doing well, man. It's, uh, you know, I, uh, I was a little torn about last night, uh, mainly because, you know, I did pick the Dodgers to win. And uh, I know you picked the Braves, <laughs> but uh, you know I'm, I'm a Giants fan at heart, and I, I didn't, I really didn't want the Dodgers to win. I didn't. Uh, but in my opinion, the better team did win. The team with more depth, uh, and it, it's a shame that the Braves uh, weren't able to hold on to that three-one lead, really, and just put them away. I think Game Five was probably the, their biggest chance, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. But um, overall, you know, I, I think it's going to be a great World Series. And, and the reason why it's going to be a great World Series, as I mentioned in our last podcast, is the, the Rays are basically the Dodgers' little brother. Uh, and when you look at the salaries, uh, when you look at the pay, team's payroll, when you look at uh, the fact that Andrew Friedman came from Tampa, has built the Dodgers into what they are today, this series is it's it's um it's ironic that it's it comes down to this i think it's going to be a great series uh and we're going to talk about it so i'm excited yeah for sure and before we get started again as always hit that like button subscribe we uh work on podcasts and we'll be talking about probably the world series our little world series recap and that'll be the shortest of all these because i assume that we don't have to do any pred predictions from there on out at least yet but yeah, like I said, we're going to be covering uh, the championship series. I kept calling it the division series. By the way, I plug myself here. I streamed game seven of the National League championship series. And for the first like hour, I had National League division series on it. So I made a big mistake there calling division series. So I blasted division series everywhere. And then some people came in and said championship series. So like, oh yeah, I'm dumb. But yeah, hopefully I don't say division series too much. Again, we're talking about the championship series and then the World Series. So, yeah, and a little preview for this before we uh, get into it. I will probably be streaming some of the World Series games here on YouTube, so make sure to come out and just hang out with us. I cannot show uh, the, the game for legal reasons, as I do not want the channel to be taken down or anything worse to get that, get sued by MLB. But I will be here, sitting here and giving, you know, reactions, analysis to each play that goes down. We had like eight people in here. Uh, during the last stream and it's a fun place to come out would highly recommend it all right so we're gonna start with the series that I, I think both of them kind of surprised both of us in a way uh, but probably the one that went more you know to what we thought it was and that'll be the Rays and the Astros you know what are your thoughts on this seven game series that the Rays ultimately ended up winning well it, it must have been scary as hell for the Rays <laughs> I, I can only imagine um, being a fan uh, of the Rays and what, what those fans must have gone through thinking about, uh, you know, coming into game seven. You know, they went up 3-0. Uh, they, they pretty much dominated the Astros in the first three games, not necessarily in terms of the scoreboard, but in terms of what they like to do, which is uh, shorten the game, let their bullpen kind of take over, timely hitting, great defense. Um, of course, our man Randy for the Rays, I mean, the, the guy is just on fire, absolutely just, you know, pounding the ball um, all over the field. Um, and, you know, the, the things were going exactly the way the Rays imagined. And then, you know, they lose a close one in game four that the Astros just barely kind of pull out. They had to hold on there at the end. Uh, and then it got a little scary. You know, the, the, the Astros got some confidence. They were able to uh, handle them in game five. And then in game six, you know, again, a, a close game. It comes down to, you know, the bottom of the, you know, bottom of the ninth. And um, look what Correa did. You know, he just ended it. So that team's dangerous. And, and I started, you know, I, I actually started to find myself rooting for the Astros. Uh, because of Dusty Baker, as I mentioned. And I will be actually, an, another preview for those of you, I'm, I'm working on a, a little uh, video for Dusty Baker, kind of a, a 
kind of a recap of his uh, career and all the unfortunate situations he's had in the postseason. So you'll be seeing that coming out pretty soon. My internet went out at work today, so sorry about that. Um, but, you know, I, I, I found myself almost rooting for Dusty in game seven, even though it went against my prediction. But ultimately, um, you know, the Rays, they, they just, they played, they played the game that they really wanted to play all series long in the games, in, in game seven. And they were able to prevail. Uh, their bullpen was just awesome. Uh, Kevin Cash, pit, you know, pushed all the right buttons. And the Astros just kind of ran out of gas at the end. Uh, you know, Bregman probably thought there in the, in the top of the eighth in game seven, he had a chance there. And, you know, he just got a little too over anxious, swung at a ball high and outside. And uh, it was too little too late for the Astros. They got down four nothing. And you just can't do that in a game seven. So kudos to the Rays, you know, kudos to their $28 million payroll. <laughs> um, you'll be, you know, I already saw a meme today about, you know, Kershaw and Betts, they make 26.5 million and the Rays make 28 million as a team. So I'm sure you'll be seeing more memes and, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff on Twitter about it. It's going to be a great series. We'll get to the Dodgers in a moment, but congratulations, Tampa Bay Rays, a class act of an organization. Uh, they're, they're young, they're talented, they, they have team chemistry, uh, they love each other, they, uh, they have nicknames for each other, they call each other the, you know, the stallions or the horses, you know, they, they, they all throw 95 plus miles an hour, they're just fun to watch, and it's great to see an organization that really did it the right way, so kudos to them. Yeah, for sure, and you know, the series, in a way, surprised me. But, again, if we go back to the predictions last week, I don't know if you guys saw that. But I did say the Astros were going to be kind of, you know, a sneaky pick to almost go on and win. I said this series might not be easy for the Rays. And going into game four, I'm looking at this like, wow, okay, the series, I'm completely wrong. The series is pretty good, easy for the Rays. And, you know, I kind of said that it probably would be. But then the Astros came storming back, taking games – four, five, and six. And, you know, I think that kind of shocked it all. And I think the Astros' weaknesses of, you know, bullpen depth kind of kind of was showing towards the end of the series. And it's so hard to play seven games in seven days as, you know, ultimately we'll talk about the Braves and what uh, that ended up, you know, happening for them is the weakness of a bullpen. But the Rays are such a strong organization. And I think their pitching really, really helped carry this series. Again, I believe a Rosarena hit like, what, 363, something like that. And the rest of the Rays team hit like under 200. And this Rays team has to find some offense if they want to go on and be well and do good in the World Series. And, you know, they're pitching, like I say always, pitching wins games. And that really showed throughout the series. Again, you had a few, uh, you know, blemishes. Nick Anderson gave up a home run to, I believe, Springer it was. Uh, the walk-off home run to Correa. You know, that we saw some key moments where the bull, Rays bullpen started to show signs of weakness. And I'm sitting there like, is it, the Rays are not going to get this far and then just fall apart. But again, game seven, they came in. They had um, Glasnow warming up in the bullpen. And they ended up continuing with Pete, uh, Pete Fairbanks. And Fairbanks, the uh, Mizzou kid, uh, shout out Mizzou, but um, locked it down. And I think he's been one of the more dominant pitchers for the Rays. And I think the big story for the Rays this series, Rosarena and the bullpen. Their starting pitching needs to go deeper. And I think that's something else that we're going to be talking about is the efficiency of starting pitching. I think that's going to play a huge, huge role coming into these upcoming series. But I think the way the Rays handled Kevin Cash, like I said, the best manager in baseball, you know, all the analytics and stuff, it all pays out. But again, like you said, Rays, great run organization. Congrats to the Rays. Really, really like what you guys here uh, have together. And you guys have to wait to see who I'm picking to win the World Series. You know, is it the Rays? Is it not? We'll see, we'll see what happens here. <laughs> Drew's just sitting there like, oh, boy, this is not going to happen. He's whatever, not going to say. Whatever he predicts will be wrong. So just go with the opposite of whatever Nick says. <laughs> Who knows? I've been right a few times, but uh, moving on to the series where I was actually not right, but 
I think this series really surprised Drew here. He thought it was a clear, easy series, a gentleman's sweep, he said, for the Dodgers. And the Braves sure almost had a gentleman's sweep there in game five. But um, what, what are your reactions to this series? I have a lot more to say on Palm this series than I did the race. Yeah, th this series was just wild. I mean, just the, the thing about this series that was so interesting was how most of the games were really out of hand. I mean, there, the, the, there really weren't a lot of close games in this series. You can look at, you know, game six and seven. But other than that, I mean, you know, the Braves got off to, the you know, obviously a great start. Um, you know, game one was close, but then they pulled away at the end. And then game two was, was not close. <laughs> and then game three was really not close. As the Dodgers said, you know, screw you. We're going to score 11 runs in the first inning. Um, and then game four was not close as the Braves just kind of, you know, took it to them. So when, when we, when we got to game five and it's, it's now three, one Atlanta in this series, I'm thinking, I mean, what, what are the Dodgers going to do here? You know, at that point, Kershaw had already been scratched. They, I mean, everything that they had been through, but the one thing that came back to me was that, you know what, this team, they've got so much depth, the Dodgers. And, and when I say depth, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about like, you know, oh, they've, got a, they've got six guys that can, you know, start a game or they've got, you know, a pretty good bench. I mean, this team basically has two lineups. They're that good, okay? And, and you saw that, as I'll get to game seven in a second, with Kike Hernandez, how he was able to basically just come off the bench and save the game for them last night. Uh, and put them in a position for Cody Bellinger to hit the game winning home run and then for them to close it out. But I mean, you know, you talk about their pitching with, with Tony Gonsolin and what they're able to do, uh, sorry, Gosselin, what they're able to do. I mean, it's, it's crazy. They, they've got depth up and down their roster. And really what it came down to for me was that they just relied on their depth. They, they said, we we have, we have more, we are, you know, we're not basically not worried about getting down in the series, kind of like what I mentioned with the Warriors, and I keep going back to this. But even if you do get down in the series and you know that you have that generational talent and depth, you don't get down on yourself because you know that you can turn it on when you need to. And that's what they did. They basically knew they had to win these games. You know, they got up early in all three of the, you know, I mean, except, except last night's game where Atlanta did go, go ahead, but in games five and six, they, they got off to a good start. In game five, they had three in the first. In game six, I believe they had two. And they just, you know, took it to the Braves and kind of, you know, kind of showed them who was boss. And then game seven last night, I mean, what a ball game. You know, the Braves get off to a good start, but so many missed opportunities for Atlanta so many missed opportunities and the, the biggest the biggest chance that they had you know really for me the game came down to i believe it was the fifth inning and yeah. it was you know they, they go ahead three two on an austin riley base hit and then what happens something that you just can't allow to happen is they end up getting second and third nobody out and a, a base running blunder, an absolute blunder where they end up, you know, running, they end up running into an out at home plate and then a terrible mistake to get thrown out on the back end of the rundown. And Marcakis ends up at first base and you got two outs. And you, you cannot, you cannot let those opportunities go to the wayside against the Dodgers because they will make you pay. And they did. They came back. Being down one is like nothing to the Dodgers. Absolutely nothing. They were not able to add on the Braves. The Dodgers took advantage of it. They got the momentum back in their dugout. And they were able to, you know, use their power with Kike and Cody to then be able to get the game to the ninth inning and finish it off. And you know what? They're, they're worthy National League champions. They've been through a hell of a lot. I mean, the first two rounds were easy, but to be able to get through something like this, you got to get the sense now with the Dodgers 
that they have been through the tough part. They have been through, you know, they have been through it. They have, they have gone through the deep end of the pool. Now the pressure is off. And I really, really believe that they are going to take a ton of, I don't usually believe in momentum, but I think they're going to take a ton of momentum into the World Series, even though their pitching may not be where it needs to be with their starting rotation. And I know the Rays are probably more set in that regard. This has to give them a lot of confidence. It's almost like they've got the monkey off their back already before the World Series. And I think that's going to do them a, a huge amount of incentive. Yeah, so first off, what a series. What a game seven that was. I mean, you talk about a pitcher's duel and a close game and, you know, generally missed opportunities and long at-bats. I think that's the main thing that hurt, you know, both teams in this series is these long, long at-bats. And I'm going to pull out game seven as that's the most fresh thing. And I think game seven is a great representation of the rest of the series as we saw with both sides. So the Dodgers ultimately game seven did not go with Kershaw. And I think um, this was an amazing move by Los Angeles. Uh, earlier on, he did give up. He had the lead going into the fifth inning, I believe it was. And then he uh, gave up three runs, I believe it was, against Atlanta, like game five or something. And mm -hmm. they could have definitely used um, Kershaw out of the bullpen like they did Urias. And I think Kershaw was definitely a player. But you see him in the dugout, would have been on short rest. But, again, I don't think they're trying to risk that game five uh, NLDS one Soto home run uh, that they gave up in 2019. That was fun to watch. But I think Dave Roberts, this is probably the best game he has managed all year long. And Brian Snicker, I don't think, was the greatest um, managing game seven. And, you know, this is where managers come to play so huge in this. And I think uh, Dave Roberts made all the amazing moves. Starting Dustin May, I think uh, that was like, iffy to me you know there are better options and I, I saw over all over Twitter they wanted Urias to start who ended up closing the game man was he amazing I think you start Urias there is no question that the Dodgers are winning at least three nothing going into the later innings and mm -hmm. uh with the Braves what we saw we saw Ian Anderson again be so dominant in the first three innings and then gave up his first and only two postseason runs in game or inning in inning four Man, now the one thing that hurt Ian Anderson, and I think it hurt the rest of the Braves team, going into the seventh inning, the Braves had thrown 140 pitches through six, six innings. They, were, they weren't even through the seventh inning. They threw 140 pitches. And this is where we saw they had two strikes to Justin Turner, two strikes to Max Muncie. Both those runs ended up coming back to hurt the Braves uh, in, the, in the fourth inning. And the ability to put away hitters, Ian Anderson completely lost. Again, lots of deep at-bats. And then the Braves' bullpen, they just had no depth whatsoever. They were practically all gas getting into game seven. So, I mean, you just look at up and down. And how is this going to play in the World Series? The Braves, to, in my eyes, if they were to advance there, which they had a very good shot. The Braves had a 3-1 lead. Welcome to Atlanta, the city of choking, 28-3 uh, to in the uh, – in the Super Bowl against the Patriots. Um, yeah, sorry to bring that up, Braves fans, but now you blew a 3-1 lead. So, yeah, it's 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 very hard for me to understand what went wrong, and I think just pitching. I think pitching is the main thing. Their offense was quiet, and it's great to bring up right here. I think a wild card, and I think this is probably the, the reason the Dodgers won is Mookie Betts. Oh, yeah. Defensively. Oh, for sure. And defensively is the only reason why. If Mookie Betts does not catch that Marcelo Zuna extra base hit, if Mookie Betts does not catch that uh, line drive at his feet where Ozuna left early and tagged, huge momentum killer, both them. And then in game seven, Betts robs Freddie Freeman of a home run. Like, this man is insane. Get him a gold glove already. Like, wow, have we seen it all from Mookie. And just thinking about it. The Dodgers and Indians had a trade for Francisco Lindor where it would have sent Lindor to the Dodgers and Corey Seager, the National League Championship Series MVP, to Cleveland. Just think about that. Corey Seager, and if that trade went down, Betts probably wouldn't be a Dodger. This series would have looked so much differently. And now I'm uh, the Dodgers front office is sitting there looking at it like, 
wow, we made amazing moves not trading Seager and getting Betts. And I think Betts probably, in my eyes, is the real MVP over Seager because if Betts doesn't make, you know, one of those, two of those catches, I don't think the Dodgers end up, end up winning the, that series. The Braves would have gone up 4-2, uh, to two, I believe it was, in, the, in game seven of the, uh, if Betts missed that home run, Rob. I think that's huge momentum killer for the Dodgers who were getting off that – uh, the 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 get the um, base running blunder that they had that momentum from there and actually might have been a four three game. Kike Hernandez might have tied it already. But like you yeah. said, depth depth all over. Amazing amazing series. Amazing game seven. I think can't say any good things. But Braves, man, I'm a Mets fan. You guys had that series. Come on, you guys had it. Oh, but I, I don't think you guys would have end up winning the World Series. And we'll get on to the World Series predictions in a minute. So, yeah, Braves, welcome to the bench with the Mets, I guess. I mean, I'm half happy. I'm not very happy as a baseball fan because no one likes the Dodgers, only bandwagons and Dodgers fans, L.A. people. And keep in mind, I, I mentioned this in our last podcast, Mookie Betts is the difference. He really is. He's, you know, offensively but also defensively, and he brings so much experience. He brings, you know, winning, obviously a winning culture from Boston, but – an energy, and, and the, the great thing about Mookie Betts is that he shows a lot of, um, he's, he's animated. He, he will get really, you know, he'll yell and scream, but he, he, he never seems to show up the other team or, you know, seems to kind of, you know, rub the other team the wrong way, like Max Muncy or Cody Bellinger or some of these other guys that I'm really not fond of with the Dodgers, okay? But Mookie Betts, he, he's, he's such a lovable guy. And, I mean, he is just – what a signing. What a, first of all, what a trade. And then what a signing. And, I mean, as I'm going to mention in a moment, it's going to pain me. But, you know, it, it'll – I guess the only positive is that I picked him all along. He's going to be the reason why this team ultimately, you know, holds up the World Series trophy this year. Yeah, for sure. And speaking of World Series trophies, giving a little bit of hint on, on it, who you got winning the World Series? What's this series going to look like to you? So we got the Tampa Bay Rays and the L.A. Dodgers. The great thing about this series is it starts right away tomorrow, uh, or I'm not sure when you're going to show this, but today. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's going to be a um, hell of a series. It's going to be a great series. Again, for me, it's all about the storylines. You know, I, as everyone knows here, I'm a baseball historian. I, I love the game. I love the history of the game. And this is one of those stories that you just, you know, if you're a Ray, if you're in the Rays organization, you can't write it any better than this. They want the Dodgers. Believe me, they want the Dodgers. They know who they used to have at the helm, Andrew Friedman. And I keep bringing his name up, but he – he is the man that basically built the Tampa Bay Rays with Joe Madden into the perennial um, organization that they've been. And I know they've missed the playoffs a few years, but for the most part, they have been very, very, very competitive since, you know, 2007, when, you know, in 2008, when they made it to the World Series and got beat by the Philadelphia Phillies. They have been um, a model organization. They do it the right way. They've got a system in place their minor league system, their, their player development, they just do it the right way. And Kevin Cash came in and he just kind of just carried the torch right along. And he's taken them almost to another level. And to do it with a $28 million payroll, it's just unbelievable. And now they play the Dodgers. They've already slayed the New York Yankees. They've already slayed the mighty Houston Astros with their payroll even though they're not as mighty anymore because they didn't have the pitching. But now they have their opportunity. And you better believe that they, they believe they can win this. I know they believe they can win it because they're young, they're talented, and they're confident. But here's the problem. <laughs> this, is a, uh, this is one of the greatest teams in the history of Major League Baseball, the, the L.A. Dodgers. I've been saying it all year long especially with Mookie Betts now, what they are able to do, what they are able to do with their depth. And again, you've got to, you've got to play in the factors. 
of this shortened season and of the new rules that there's a DH in both leagues now. That is huge for them. That is absolutely humongous that they don't have to, you know, have their pitcher hit. And normally in a regular season, they'd be at home and then the games that would be at home, they, they would have to have their pitcher hit. And the fact that they're able to plug in a DH, they've got so many options. They've got Edwin Rios and they've got Jock Peterson and Kike Hernandez and just on and on. I mean, they've got guys on their bench that aren't even getting at bats like Beatty. I mean, these guys are, these guys are talented players. They'd be starting for the San Francisco Giants. And they are going to be able to mix and match. They're pitching, you know, they got just got announced Kershaw is going to be going in game one. You know, he should be pretty well rested after the scratch. Uh, you know, and, and it's not like he had a huge long outing in his last outing. They are, you know, they're set. They've got a stud in Walker Bueller. They've got Urias, who they can now pitch. They've got Gonsolin. I mean, they've got everything. And they've got Kenley Jansen back at the, you know, in the bullpen at the back end. I mean, he was up in the bullpen last night ready just in case Urias got, you know, walk someone or he was ready. Uh, and he, he's, he looks like he's got his confidence back. He's got that movement on his fastball, on his splitter. So I, I have all the confidence in the world in Kenley Jansen. They seem to have the confidence also. So, Maybe you thought the Rays had an advantage in their bullpen. I don't think so anymore. And the, the truth is, is you made a great point. The Rays, they're just not scoring enough runs. They're just not. And, and you know, it's, this is not a one-man show. It can't be done single-handedly. And they're just not getting the production from Brandon Lau, from Kiermaier. Uh, you know, you, G-Man Choi, you know, he had that one big hit. But other than that, he hasn't really done much. You know, they've, they've got to have the production up and down the lineup. I don't see it. I don't think they're going to be able to generate enough offense. Uh, you know, obviously, when you when you look at their starting rotation, Blake Snell, he's he's been a question mark. He just hasn't really had any length. Um, now, Glass now, he obviously, you know, looks like a stud. But other than that, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for the Rays to keep up with this team. I do see them winning a couple games, but honestly, I do not see this series going seven. I see it going six games. The Los Angeles Dodgers will win the World Series in 2020. But remember, folks, you can put an asterisk behind it because this was not a normal season. It'll never be considered a real season. I don't care what anyone says. So go ahead and win it this year. You'll choke it away again next year. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the World Series, here we are again in this crazy, crazy, crazy season. You say a lot of good things about the Rays, and you say a lot of good things about the Dodgers. And ultimately, uh, you say my predicts, predictions are always wrong. So I hope I'm wrong again. But uh, clearly, I think in my eyes, is you know, I think the better team here is probably going to be the Dodgers. I do think they're going to be raising that World Series banner in, uh, after seven days or seven games, I should say. I do believe there are going to be uh, days off and then after game two yes, and after game five. Off. So that is going to be huge for the Rays organization. And, you know, the real, like you said, the big thing for me with the Rays is their offense. I just have not seen it enough. They have managed to get timely hits when they need it. You know, in the times that matter most, Brasso hit an absolute bomb off Chapman. So, you know, they, they get timely hits. And I think another thing to keep into take into consideration, the Dodgers just played three series here at Globe Life Field. Mookie Betts mm -hmm. just robbed a home run at Globe Life Field. So defensive-wise, I think the Dodgers are going to have such an advantage playing at this place. The Rays are entering the stadium for the first time uh, ever. You know, none of these yeah. players have played here before. So I think that is a great – thing to watch out for the Dodgers they had the Dodgers are going into this series I think with more advantages than they ever have and you know it's it, it's gonna be a fun series to watch and like I said I think it's gonna be pitcher's duel you think game seven was a pitcher's duel think of game seven all seven games I'm seeing that this series is gonna go 
I think the the, the Rays are going to have such a well rested bullpen now after resting two days they only have to pitch two days and then they get another day off so this bullpen is be more like the regular season but with more days off basically you see the Rays play seven games in a row they're using players every couple of days now they get a, a set day off every three games at max so I think that Kevin Cash is going to be an amazing manager I think the games the Rays win are because Cash makes the right moves in the bullpen and, you know, managerial-wise, like I said, we saw in Game 7, I think Dave Roberts was a better manager in Game 7, which is why the Dodgers won. So, if you know, if Dave Roberts can continue pushing those buttons, I think the Dodgers have such a well advantage. You mentioned the bullpen. The Dodgers' bullpen, with all these young starters, May, Gosselin, Urias, you know, Jansen's back. You know, you have Blake Trinan, Caleb Ferguson. You got uh, the lefty Hern- uh, Hernandez or something like that. I'm forgetting his name. The Gonzalez. Left Gonzalez, that's the one. Uh, the, the one that gave up the home run to Albies. But, um, yeah. yeah, so they have such an overall well, well bullpen, well staffed. Kershaw, I mean, Chokeshaw going in game one. You got Bueller. You, know, you, have, you have the options. And I think with the days off, you know, it'll be interesting to see. We saw Strasburg and Corbin be such an X factor in the World Series last year. You know, the, I think another thing that's going to make or break the series, whatever side has that one pitcher that has that Steven Strasburg that goes out and starts a couple games, comes out of the bullpen available in game seven, like Madison Bumgarner did for the Giants, who at whichever team has that pitcher, I think is going to win the series. And I'm going to give it to the Dodgers right now. For me, the Rays, I think they're looking a lot like the Braves right now. They are going long, long at-bats, especially when you look at Blake Snell in his last outing. He's not been able to go deep. I think long at-bats really, really hurt teams, and I think the Rays almost at some points try to be too fine. You know, the earth is covered by 71% of water. The rest is covered by the Rays' defense. They need to allow the the, uh, the opposition to put the ball in play more. The Dodgers, you are going to give up more home runs. But, you know, you just got to make the pitches that you are going to let him hit. you got to leave him down in the zone. Don't leave him up. You know, we saw Kike just belt a ball. And, you know, Bellinger, fastball up, mistake, belted that one. I think the Dodgers' weaknesses are definitely going to be down in the strike zone. I think they're a much better team that hits fastballs up. Again, you see all the mistakes when they scored all those 11 runs. Muncy's grand slam, fastball up. Bellinger's home run, fastball up. Hanging slider to Kike gone you know it's you leave pitches up to this Dodgers team it's gonna be hit a long way and I think if the Rays capitalize on leaving pitches down making the right moves they're gonna win but the offense on the Rays gives me question marks and this is why the Dodgers who just battled up that game seven really showed me they are not quitters they came back in that series they have the offense and their offense has been quiet too it's not been amazing it's not been the Houston Astros offense you can say that has a bunch of guys hitting over 300. You know, it, the Dodgers and the Rays, you compare to them, they're very comparable. Corey Seager or Rosarena. They're both the only guys that are really amazing hitters. And then, then you have Betts, and then, you know, the line that goes from the Dodgers. But then you get, have a huge drop out, drop off under a Rosarena there. And, you know, and the last thing, my last point here for the Rays, making case for the Rays, because you better believe I'm going to be rooting for the Rays. I'm, I'm sure both of us will be rooting for the Rays. Oh, yeah. We hope we're wrong. Believe yeah, we hope we're wrong. And, you know, like I said, I've been wrong a lot before. So, uh, especially this uh, postseason in this bracket. But, you know, the Rays, they were made to beat the Yankees. The Yankees are very comparable to the Dodgers. Yep. You just look, look at this team. The starting pitching, it's both there. I mean, Dodgers have probably a strength over the, the Yankees. But the lineups are so comparable with just power hitting players. This Rays team is young. It has the confidence. It's went out and beat the Yankees. You're comparing player to pe- player. Bellinger, Judge, you know, Seager and Stanton are, are arguably yep. comparable. You know, it's just looking at this team. I think that the Rays have such advantages too, but I think overall the advantages are going to swing to the Dodgers, the momentum swinging to the Dodgers. Again, I hope I'm wrong. We both hope we're wrong. But I'm just looking at this, and I just – the Dodgers is something going. I'm going back to my preseason predictions where I picked to predict the Rays, Dodgers, and I had the Dodgers in seven winning. So I'm going right back to that one. I should not should not have gone off of it to see the Braves. But, you know, it was almost a good pick until uh, games five, six, and seven for the Braves. But anyways, you guys, I hope you guys do enjoy or did enjoy that podcast. And, you know, remember to leave a like and subscribe. And comment below who you think is going to win the World Series. 
uh, tell us we're wrong and that we're terrible and, you know, that we made terrible picks and, you know, give Braves fans that reassurance, you know, welcome to the seat with the Warriors blowing and the Indians blowing three, one leads and, uh, you know, series that matter most, but Drew, you got anything to say right here and send us off with. Yeah. I just want everyone to um, enjoy the world series. You know, it, it's, it's been a long journey, Nick, for us. I mean, I remember our first podcast when we were, we were debating if there was even going to be a season, if there was even going to be any games. And it was, it, it got grim there for a while. Well, I, I've got to tell you, I've really enjoyed this postseason. I really have. Um, you know, I've, I've, I, I don't know, a lot of you know this, but I've had a lot of stress going on. I'm having a baby. I started a new job. Like, I got a bunch of stuff, I, you know, that's um, keeping me busy at home and stressed. But it's been great to be able to turn on the TV, watch the games. Um, and it's been great. It was, it was nice to see some fans back in the stands. We forgot to mention that for the Dodgers and Braves, even though they're in small pods. Um, and we'll see that again in the World Series. So enjoy the series. Have fun, you know, if you're 21 and over, crack open a beer. If you're not, uh, don't be like Nicholas and drink uh, underage because we don't want anyone. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure Nicholas got taken to prison that night. I mean, I don't think I did. Uh, I, it was looking uh, pretty good. So um, maybe I wasn't. The series was looking pretty good. So I wasn't smoking anything or drinking anything. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy it. Uh, Watch out for YouTube. Watch out for the YouTube lives I will be doing during the game when I'm available. Again, I have baseball practice some days. So, you know, be on the lookout for those. And we will see y'all in the next coming weeks when we recap the World Series. Thanks for watching.